right, girls, Pastor Jess here. We are going to be showing you a portion of our women's conference. I pray that you're blessed by it. I hope you learn. These are some hot topics and some things. I pray you learn and you're educated and that you see God's hand in it and that it blesses your heart. Love you. Deborah was sharing with us in our last session. We know that our culture has been shifting away from our creator's design for millennia. Humans deciding that we're going to value our own ability to make sense of the world over God's word, God's plan, and God's design. Tradition, cultures, definitions, norms, mannerisms, traits, and customs have come and gone through time. But as believers in the one true God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who formed man from the dust of the earth and placed Adam and Eve in the garden, we have been given God's word, and that does not change. When society is in an uproar, as we saw in the opener this morning, and redefining what God has already defined, causing the very foundations of our identities and self-understanding to be questioned, we can be confident that God's word is the answer. Our identity, the core essence of who we are as people, God's intentions toward us is revealed in his word. We are in a war, girls. We have an enemy who wants to bring confusion, uncertainty, deception, to the crowning jewel of God's creation. If we don't know who we are, we won't know how to be what God has called us to be. In the garden, Satan questioned Eve. Did God really say? Today we want to take you to the word and answer some of these pressing questions of our day. What does God really say about humanity, about women, about our gender roles and those expressions. Not based on what the culture says, but what the word says that transcends, transcends culture, time, place. We want to look at what God has to say. So with that in mind, we have invited our wonderful ministers and pastors here. We've got Pastor Sue, Pastor Tracy, Dr. Vanessa, Pastor Michelle, to explore this topic together with the women. And you know what? Since I'm a teacher, I thought we'd just start right in the garden at the beginning, right? In the garden, we're going to first address our humanity. Because whether it's subtle or obvious, Satan is trying to diminish our humanity and make us equal with the rest of creation. And that's not God's design. So in the garden, Genesis chapter 1, says God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him male and female he created them. Dr. B, what distinguishes humans from the rest of creation? I think the big thing is that we are created in the image of God. You know, animals can't, they have no emotions. They can't ex feel the joy of the Lord. They can't express sorrow or happiness or anything like that. They can't appreciate the beauty the awe and wonder that Pastor Jess talked about of God's creation, and they can't worship God. Human beings were given the ability to speak. You know, God spoke creation into existence, and now he's given us the ability to speak to mountains in our lives and command them to be moved so we can have what he says we can have. You know, the breath of God was breathed into us only. He formed us with his hands and put his breath in us, and that gave us an eternal spirit so we were able to be saved and have eternal life. And that's what distinguishes us. Amen. Anybody have anything to add to that perspective? It's a wonderful answer. Just want to give anybody else an opportunity. I was trying to keep it in my two minutes, but I got a verse. <laughs> Go, bring it. <laughs> I like this verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 39. There are different kinds of flesh, one kind for humans, another for animals, 
another for birds, and another for fish. We are not the same, and the Bible states it clearly right there. Amen? There you go. That's right. Each multiplies after its own kind, right? And those are the kinds. The Bible clearly di distinguishes those things. I love, you know, Pastor Deborah was talking about science earlier. And there's a scripture, I believe it's uh, Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of man to uncover it. And that's why science is changing because we think we understand creation, but then we learn something new. And then we think we understand that, and then we learn something new. Right? But God put it all in there. And our job is we're trying to figure it out. And sometimes those perspectives can be very, very wrong. Uh, Pastor Sue. So God creates us unique from the animals, unique from the rest of creation. What is God's design then for humanity on earth? Well, originally in the garden when he created Adam and Eve, first Adam and woman, he said that he created the male and female. Then he blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So he told us to be fruitful, to prosper. He told us to fill the earth and subdue it. To, to take dominion. He gave us authority over the world as stewards of the world. And so his original design in that authority is that we would walk with him and talk with him. And he walked with Adam in the cool of the day. They were, it was, there was no breach in the communion that God had with his man and his woman. They were one in perfect unity. Well, then we know sin came in, Adam, Adam fell, man fell, and that fellowship, that communion, that authority was broken. And so then through the blood of Jesus, we've been restored to that. And I love uh, Luke 10, 19. He's, Jesus said to us, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. We've been completely restored to take authority over all the power of the enemy. And then it says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Jesus paid the, sin, the price that we needed paid for sin and death and has completely restored us to that place of fellowship with the Father. In 2 Corinthians 6.16, it says, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So we've been completely restored to that place of authority and communion with our Heavenly Father. It's amazing. Yeah, wonderful. God's original plan for us to, to be in a position of authority over all of creation and restored back by Jesus Christ. Well, when you think back to the garden, before we leave the garden, you think about the moment Adam was created, Eve was created. Pastor Tracy, can you talk to us a little bit about that first relationship? So beautiful to think that Adam and Eve had this direct connection with God. As Pastor Sue was saying, they walked in the garden with God. And uh, this is something Pastor Teresa brought out. I was like, oh, I've never heard that. So I'm going to share what you told me. And that is Adam was put to sleep and Eve was brought forth out of his rib and got some alone time with God at that moment, you know? And so it was like, before Eve was formed, Adam and God were together and, and God said, he's alone, this isn't good. Formed woman and it was in those times of spending time with God that he was telling them who they were. You are the masters of this planet. Subdue it, form it, work it. And that's who they were, and that was the relationship that they had with him from the very beginning. So beautiful. And just like Pastor Sue said, we have that back now every day, each one of us. So good. You know, when a baby is born and spends that initial, those initial moments, those initial days and weeks the, and months, that's where their identity is coming from, right? That initial relationship, what is spoken over them, the love that is given to them, no different. God spent that intimate time with his creation, the core of our identity. We've been talking about identity and who we are and the things, the way the world redefines. We have to look at the way God gave us our initial identity. What was his initial intent? 
So we have humanity created in the garden, but in that garden, we've got an Adam and an Eve, and they're different from each other, right? The Bible says, the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. So humanity is unique, but then being a woman is unique. What makes a human a woman? Dr. Vanessa? <laughs> that wasn't your question. Whose question was that? Uh, why did God create women? Is that me? Uh -huh. No, that's yours. Dr. V was first. Go. I know you can answer this. Okay. So a woman at fertilization, when the sperm meets the egg, that is life. Okay? At that time, you receive DNA. You're either an XX, a woman, or you're an XY, a man. Nothing changes that. Okay, and so a woman is able to give birth. She's called woman because she has a womb, all right? And regardless of your characteristics, I think that one thing that happens in today's society is that we have all these stereotypes, and um, I don't like it because I wasn't a stereotype kind of person. You know, I never played with dolls. That did not make me a man. It made me a woman that didn't like dolls. I like the sciences. I became a doctor. That didn't make me a man. It made me a woman that likes science. Amen? Yeah. And I don't like to shop. I know I'm different. I miss out on a lot of fellowship because all the ladies like to shop. I'm an Amazon kind of girl. I like to know what I want, go in there, click it, and it's there the next day. But guess what? I'm a mother of five children. I love being a woman. I love my identity in Christ. And just because I don't fit into a stereotype, if I was, if I was young in this day and age, they would try to tell me to change my gender because you don't fit a norm. And that's totally a lie from the pit of hell. So good. You know, talk about exposing the lie. Dr. Vanessa, I think I shared that with the panel during our prep too. I said, if I had grown up in this time because of my own tendencies not to play with dolls and I don't like shopping and I never played house and all of those things, or I played with the balls and I played kickball with the guys, people would have labeled me, right? And, and when they label you and they call you out because that's the way the world sees it, then you begin to question yourself. But right, God creates women in all different kinds of forms. Right. So don't let your likes and dislikes define what God has defined genetically, right? In your mother's womb. So Pastor Michelle, why did God look down and say, it's not good, we need a woman? Okay, so I'm going to touch a little bit of what Pastor Tracy talked about, which is when God created Eve, Adam was asleep. And so her first interaction, her first relationship was with God. And I think that's important to point this out because we can truly then understand where our value and where our identity comes from. In Genesis 127, it tells us that God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Without the woman, the man was half the story. She was not an afterthought. God said in, in Genesis 2.18 that without her, the man's condition was not good and that he will make her, him, a helper suitable for him. This is the first hint that the suitable helper God creates is not subordinate, but absolutely necessary. So the text is clear that women equally share an identity as image bearers of the creator and an equal responsibility in stewarding God's creation. So that's... <laughs> so good. Everything was good in creation. That's right. Right? Everything was good. And he said one thing was not good. One thing was not good. So it was actually the first problem in creation, right? That's right. That's Everything right. was good, but one thing was not good. And it was not good that he would be alone. So he, God would create for Adam a help me. So basically what he could say, she's the problem solver. 
Yes. Right? He created a problem solver. And she has been solving problems ever since. Think about so many of the things that you're called to do and so many of your responsibilities in the context of problem solving. And you can say, yeah, I do solve that problem. Hungry family, I solve the problem. They need a ride, I solve the problem. We want a family, give me some seed and I'll create a child and solve the problem, right? You get a house, you turn it into a home, you're solving the problem. Problem solvers from the beginning. There's this interesting word in the Hebrew, ezer, right? That she's created to be. Ezer connecto. Pastor Sue, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, ezer connecto. Depending on how you pronounce it in Hebrew, it can either mean to rescue or to save or to be strong. It's used about 21, not about, it is used 21 times in the Old Testament. Three of those times is about offering military aid for Israel, but 17 of those times it's about God helping Israel. God is the original Acer Connecto. And so twice in the Old Testament, in Genesis 2.18 and Genesis 2.20, that word Acer Connecto means help meet. That is us. We are the Etzer Connecto. So just like God is strong and his help toward us, amen? And he's given us the Holy Spirit, the helper. We are the Etzer Connecto for man. It only implies strength. If you're drowning, you're in a pool, and somebody's alongside the pool, and they reach down and pull you out, they helped you. Who is stronger there? The helper. So the enemy has lied to us and caused us to think that we are less than. Only after the fall did God say that man would rule over woman. He didn't say he wasn't pronouncing it, that that was his desire. He said that that's what fallen nature would do. But originally he created woman and the Bible says he brought her back to him. And he, she was a helper comparable and suitable for him. But he brought her back into face-to-face relationship with him, with the man. And man and woman and God were one in the garden. And there was only respect and only mutual cooperation in naming of the animals and in, in taking authority over the garden. They could have both cast out the serpent. They could have taken dominion over the serpent, but they didn't. Eve was deceived. Adam was not. He knew what he was doing. And sin came into the garden. But um, originally, we were cre- created, and we can be, and we are the Etzer Connecto. That's so good. I love that. We learned a new word, Etzer Connecto. Um, in the New Testament, there is, I was just remembering, there's the helper and the, uh, the one who comes alongside And that's always the Holy Spirit. Is he weak? Is he the slave? Is the Holy Spirit a slave? Is the Holy Spirit sad, busted, disgusted? No. And I've always felt like the woman's role is so similar to what the Holy Spirit does for us. And even as a woman in my home, I'm just going to make this super practical. What would the Holy Spirit do here? Because I know how he works with me. He's very sensitive, isn't he? But he's so strong. So just another role model for us to look at and say, I'm like the Holy Spirit in my family. Beautiful. Wow. So good. You know, when you know our identity, we know our creation function, what was God in chance with humanity. Why did God create the woman after he had created everything else? She came in to solve this problem, who she is as a helper right and that term that god chose to use that he uses to describe himself in the old testament these are powerful thoughts